Yes. Welcome. And now Matt's going to do a math up. Okay. First, we're doing a test of the interpretation equipment. Primero, oh, okay. interpreting test. I'm doing the English recording. We're doing a test of the English into Spanish. Y ahora cambiamos. Vamos a hacer una prueba al inglés. Now we are checking the audio to see if the interpreters can be heard in English. So now I am speaking in English and I am checking to see if people can hear. For those, well, there's no one online. So, um, so first, anyone who is not English Spanish bilingual should get uh, uh, interpretation equipment in the back with the interpreters. We are walking the road of language justice here. It's a path that we're making as we go. Thank you for participating. And we're open to improvements, suggestions as we go. We're trying to make spaces that are multilingual, uh, hence the simultaneous interpretation. We have a whole team of interpreters on Zoom and some in the back of the room uh, and right here. So please raise your hand if you are an interpreter. If you have any trouble with the equipment, please talk to these interpreters with their hands up. If, if uh, you, it's in the large group session and, it, and there's interpretation happening, please use a pace that can be interpreted. If you're going too fast, people will give you this signal, which means slow down. And if you're speaking too low, and the interpreters can't hear you, they'll give you this signal to please speak louder. We're trying to make spaces where people can speak in their heart languages, their mother languages, whenever possible. This is one step in that direction. Estamos en el camino de hacer we are in the path of making spaces multilingües that are multilingual, de, de starting this process lenguaje. for Entonces, language justice. En el, en so la there's sala, a whole team of interpreters here en Zoom, in person and also equipo, in Zoom. If you need anything los, here in person, uh, please speak to the interpreters aquí, that are here. Mano. They can raise their hands. And if you need help on Zoom, please reach out to the Zoom interpreters. Y, um, si, por favor, hablen despacio. Please talk slowly and at a, at a steady pace that can be translated or interpreted. Please, if we're making the sign, is to talk slower, and this is to talk louder. Thank you for everybody who's participating in this process of language justice. This conference is presented on land that has been stewarded by indigenous people since before European colonization. We work to heal the destruction caused by colonization. We appreciate your support, solidarity, and continued learning, and a lot about what this project, this workshop is specifically on this, this topic. If uh, you don't know what land you're stewarding, um, you know, the original tribes from that area, or ongoing stewards of that land. You can find some of them at native-land.ca. And we especially want to recognize that we're on Nipmuc land here. And, um, and that this conference is also based on racial equity in the food system with a, a theme around when we be that brings ancestral wisdom from indigenous people around the, the globe, especially from the global south and participation 
uh, throughout this week. And we celebrate the restorative agriculture that is rooted in longstanding cultural practices of Black, Indigenous, and other people of color farmers. Here are some resources for centering racial equity in your own community. Several local organizations are listed here. And if anyone else would like to shout out or put in the chat other organizations you would like mentioned, feel free to do that at this time. You'll be learning a about a lot of them today too. Thank you to the partner level sponsor, Stonyfield Organic, and all the other partner level sponsors. We really encourage you to buy from them, support them since they've supported this conference and no problem. And to the other supporter level sponsors. Okay. That's all our introduction. My name is Matt. I'm with Global Village and a long time Nilsa Mass member. And I'm really happy to pass it over to Chief Sekman Pacheke for Spring Buffalo to open this up with a grounding. Blessing. Chiefs, come on up. Good right here. Yep, it's great. Okay, it's waiting on now. It's Danya. Join us, please. All right. All right. Come on up here. Nep nephew, come on. We'll pass it. Nick. Come on up. All right. All right, so I'm going to go to my left and you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Chief Skywatcher from the Missinoian Band of Nittmunds of Springfield, Mass. And I'm also a member of PPLT, the Pokemon of the Pocasset Land Trust. Oh. Hi, my name is Chief Lena Toothfeathers. Nittmunds from Springfield, member of the PPLT. Nice to meet you and see you all. Oh. I'm Rocky, also known as Basquant and Pashunitas. Uh, Chief of the Nigger and the Hunting Narragansett Tribe, also a member of the Narragansett Indian Tribe. Hi, my, nom my name is Ulupixan. Um, my name is Ulupixan. I am a member of um, the tribe Maya Quiche from Guatemala. And I'm also a Pocasa Poconoke tribe. I am Mitch Pajquapmo, Chief Two Running Up, Pocasa Poconoke Nation. And John Graham, in the name Running Water. Um, a board member, PPLT, the Cassock, Wampanoag. My name is Nikki, a uh, wandering Indian that was taken in by the Cassock tribe. Um, oh, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Matt Watkelk, Chief Topokot, when the animal, with Chinny, the botany, the way in this niece Machine make Gawi, Mui Wansika, a home, the body, the bot day. Brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful day. Dance around and above the red earth. All tribes are welcome at the great rock, honoring our clans. I thank you for our relations. These things I say are forever eternal. I am Sequan Pajeke, Yellow Feather of the Yellow Feather Clan of Asamequin, as you know as Massasoit, 
for Kenoke, for Cassid, our hope. All right. And we are standing on Nick Monk lands. Thank you for your feet to be able to move. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. So I guess we're just still speaking on what we're doing here. So we all come together as nations to represent our lands, our territory, and our people. And when we come together, that's more powerful. And now we bring that energy out to you so that we can all learn from each other because that's what the creator wants us to do, learn from each other. So if we're not walking in step with each other, then we're walking around each other and we need to walk with each other. So all the other indigenous folks that are here, okay, you don't have to be from these lands of the Americas of the United States because they're Americas, okay? There's no America, there's Americas, okay? So welcome your indigenousness to all of our indigenous people that come from Central America, North America, South America, because believe it or not, the United States government recognizes you as American Indians and Aboriginals not as Native Americans. Native Americans are owned by the federal government. We're Aboriginals and indigenous folks from all over. When you go to the United Nations, we do not talk about Native American or American Indian. We talk indigenous. Indigenous Peoples Network is about all of us. So welcome that. All right? Welcome that. So our, our blessings go out to all y'all. We're just the bringers of the truth but you the truth, so recognize that. So, so we just want to talk a little bit about PPLT and how it was formed. PPLT was formed off of our lands and we kind of grew from there. And our goal is to bring together all territorial lands to get back to the people. Because if we're not giving back to the people, then we don't have a unit like this here that is listening to us. In the meantime, food access is important to us. But without land, you don't have food access. Okay? You don't have tradition. You don't have passing on that next generation if you don't have land. Okay? It's not land someone's giving it to you. It's land that's yours. Because once you have it, and get rid of that word ownership, you have it, now we can pass it around to all of us that we grow on. And that's our whole thing, is the collaboration amongst indigenous folks, BIPOC, which BIPOC in the sense of it's just another word for the federal government to say minority, okay? So we wanna separate ourselves. We are indigenous people. We don't fit in that people of color box, we only fit in that when it comes to a grant or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we don't fit into that box because that's not us. We know who we are as we stated here about our nations. And if you don't come out and teach that to the next generation, then you're being blinded by what's going on today. So everything now, everybody wants a piece of the native culture. Well, that's okay. But as long as you're bringing back something to us that you took, okay, then that's fine. A lot of our lands that we, that will return to us, we had other people pay for them because it's called repatriation, not reparation, repatriation. Because once we get back something that someone took from us, we're not paying for that. We're letting them pay for that. And then we're gonna work the lands. We're going to bring in the other tribes. We're going to bring in the other knowledge that we had. And that's what it's all about. Okay. So I just wanted to introduce everyone here because respect is what we're at. And I missed someone here. Michelle. Okay. You can introduce yourself as well. She's a new addition to the team. You know? So, okay. All right. Organization. Okay, you got it. All right, so we just want to end with another blessing. Everybody stand. And we're going to let the chief take us out.
<laughs> or her legs. I thank you all for this gathering today. I thank you, Creator, for allowing this beautiful day to be able to take place and giving recognition to all the great things that you are doing through us as we steward our homelands and we invite those who are from other lands to steward alongside with us. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and on with all the glory for ordering our steps to move in a direction that you would have us to move and to keep us in line for seven generations down the road that our children's 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 children will have a land, a home, a earth to inherit. Yeah. Oh. 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 Thank you. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Uh, a different kind of welcome. Uh, we're going to do a quick run through of some of the partners for the Picasso Poconoke Land Trust. And then I hope you came. Can I hear me if I'm over here? No. Okay. I hope you came uh, with some energy <laughs> uh, because you're doing stuff. You're not just going to be sitting and listening to us talk about things. So we're going to do a quick run through. And, and then if you, if you want some more energy, I have some sugar. Uh, you know, that's actually not a real thing, but you can still have it to make you feel uh, energized. And then from there, we're going to break into different groups. So you'll kind of see, but we're going to start with just an introduction uh, and you can move on, Matt, to the next slide. Welcome. Next slide. Okay, we did that. Next slide. <laughs> okay, our community partners. Next slide, please. Cool. Okay, so Chief gave a description of PPLT, so I'm going to move through this one very quickly. We have uh, a lot of great programs that are being offered to Indigenous people across the Northeast, as well as uh, anyone else who, who meets um, a variety of categories, unless you're a, a very wealthy white male landowner, we can help you. But if you've been on your land for a very long time and you're making a lot of bucks, you're probably okay. Um, so uh, we have an Indigenous Roots Forever program run by uh, Rocky. Rocky, can you um, raise your hand? There he is. So he's doing food sovereignty work um, down in Rhode Island and in Connecticut, he's helping people grow in a Three Sisters Manor and, and many other ways. And if you want to know more, I would definitely encourage you to chat with him afterwards. We provide conservation services and trainings. We provide climate mitigation services and trainings. And we help people walk through the very complex and sometimes irritating process, sorry if you're from the USDA in here, of USDA services. Uh, but I think many USDA people can also agree it's a little bureaucratic because you're a bureaucracy. Okay, so <laughs> next slide, I'm gonna turn it over to Bloom, I believe. Oh, there's a little delay. There we go. Okay. Balloon, you're up. Come and just say. Just to speed this way. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Voy a hablar en español. I'm going to speak in my language. I'm going to speak in Spanish, my native language. <laughs> um. Uh, I want to say thank you to the people that have welcomed me to this land. Quiero decir gracias a las personas que me I say thank you to people that let all, me come to the land. George for giving me um, a home. And uh, Jefe, um, Chief George. Eh, yo tuve un sueño. Um, hace 15 años, I had a dream eh, about 15 years ago daba, um, classes de inglés, that I was giving classes, English classes, and a program in Providence. In Pro in Providence. In una clase, and in eh, one of those classes with my students, 
eran también guatemaltecos. That were also eh, Guatemalan. Tuvimos un deseo de poder regresar a la tierra. Muchos de nosotros a lot en nuestros países in our country, trabajamos la tierra desde work muy with the ground since we're very young. Y hoy hoy hablábamos de cómo no nos gustaba hacer eso. Me decía, está And sucio. today we talked about Pero how we verdad, didn't like that. We didn't like to be dirty. And I personally love to be dirty. Los, la my, my grandmother de una semilla. taught me ahora how marvelous one seed is. And now I can teach that to my children. So here in my farm, we do a lot of work teaching people the magic how one seed we can have 15 pounds that we can then convert to 100 pounds after a while if we save those seeds and how Mother Earth is so generous with us and we have lost that knowledge. We have forgotten because of this capitalism way that tells us that there's not enough for all of us. So we work a lot because we, we do live in a capitalism world, so we have to and we also teach how to run co-ops. We also do a lot of workshops about health, mental health, physical health, emotional health. And a lot of herbal work, which is the the need that we found out and we also do a lot of work in no solo earth's health and not just soil like health me, lo, lo dicen los médicos aquí, like the salud, doctors no say oh like health eso, pero not just chemicals ceremonia. but also the ceremony si no estamos en ceremonia, because no if estamos. we don't do our ceremonies we're not free we do a lot of that work centered for indigenous people color, and for people of color la raza, de credo, de lo que sea, from the race the creed, it doesn't matter that want to do the work eh, with us. Entonces, te doy so, gracias a PPLT I'm porque nos thankful han dado for PPLT because they have given us our funds to do this work and have recognized us and have taught us a lot to do traditional no work no that ve. sometimes you don't see. Gracias. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, well, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, thank you to PPLT Vanessa. for making this all possible. My name is Jody Mendoza, and this is my husband, Richie Pena. We represent Farming is Life. The uh, very short version of this is we come from an entertainment and business background. Um, all of our businesses have always been directed towards creating um, benefits for our community, for communities of color. And we realized during the pandemic that we weren't doing enough. And that was when we also saw the weaknesses in food access. And we realized, you know what's so important? We want to bring healthy food to our communities, to anyone who can't access healthy food but wishes to. But then we realized before you do that, there were so many hurdles. And that's what we're here to talk to you about today is some of the uh, difficulties that we face as farmers, how we can collectively overcome these difficulties and how we can uh, also operate within the climate, uh, within the context of climate change, which is hitting us so fast. And um, of course, in agriculture, it is something we live with every single day. So, like Jody said, hello everyone, my name is Vichy Peña, I am from the Dominican Republic, I grew up in Boston, I've been here since I was like seven years old. Um, farming is something that is new to me, um, I was not a farmer, I, if anything, probably my family uh, comes more from a fishing background, because my grandfather in the Dominican Republic, he was a fisherman, 
Um, so farming is kind of new to me, but at the same time, it feels very familiar. Um, during the pandemic, we realized a lot of things like Jody said, um, and we were lucky enough to have the opportunity to come across, uh, buy some land, and we were able to buy a beautiful uh, lot of land in Winston and Mass um, yeah. with 64 acres, lots of natural woods, lots of natural habitats that we are um, protecting and now caring for. Um, and here we are, now I'm a farmer. I was formerly a music producer uh, living in Miami before the pandemic. I have been living there for about three, four years. I was traveling back and forth between Miami and Boston, three weeks there, or two weeks here, five weeks there, three weeks here. And it was becoming very difficult to be far away from the family. So when I was forced to stay home after the pandemic, I realized that this is where I wanted to stay. Um, and getting the farm has been one of the, the, the coolest blessings. Now, given my background and what I do in music, I've always been a little bit techie. So I'm hoping to bring kind of like my background in music and entertainment, social media management, artist management, brand management, and development um, into the farming world. So I'm approaching the farm as if it was an artist. Um, I am working on content for it. I am working on marketing material for it. And one of the many goals at Farming is Life is to educate the people who follow us and kind of teach them what we learn along the way. And uh, hopefully they will follow and do the same and, you know, uh, keep the, the vision going. Because I think Fair at the day, we're all here. And like the chief said, we need to walk with each other and, you know, not around each other. So I think it's important that we share knowledge and that we work together to combat all the different things that we're facing, especially climate change, which really scares me. Um, and it's really serious because a lot of people in the city probably don't notice it, but climate change, man, like I see it every day. You walk outside to a field, you see how dry the grass is or how much water you need or how there's no uh, birds around or how there's no insects around, there's less bees. So these are all things that really concern us and should concern all of us. Um, so hopefully we're gonna be, you know, bringing awareness to everything that's happening on that front. Thank you. So, Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle. I work with PPLT and thank you all for your beautiful um, welcome. I'm also a PhD student at the University of Vermont where I um, work in the UVM Institute for Agroecology. And being here feels like very full circle. I got my start in organic agriculture when I was an 18 year old. And I actually happened to work on a farm um, with Laura Davis who runs Long Life Farm. And so to have like my start at farming be with an amazing woman mentor, she really opened up the doors for me and I started attending the NOFA conferences. So being here now today, somehow still in school, like eight years later, <laughs> um, perpetually a student uh, is, is really such an honor. And um, I'll give a little bit of background on the Institute for Agroecology. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to chat um, after. So I think just first and foremost, um, we hear a lot of terms in these workshops or like regenerative, organic, um, climate smart agriculture, but, uh, agroecology is different in the sense that it is very much politically grounded. It, as a method, goes, we've been farming agroecologically since the beginning of, of time, and it's rooted in indigenous wisdom and explicitly recognizes that. And it also recognizes the root causes of injustice and insus in unsustainability in the food system rooted in capitalism, colonialism, racism, sexism, all the isms. Um, and so I think like from that place approaching um agriculture through this holistic understanding of agriculture socially politically economically and environmentally is where the work um at UVM usually really grounds itself and so these are the these are our principles um but something that's really important to the institute is really challenging the research enterprise, like what is research and who is it for, who should it be for? And so um, UVM, the Institute utilizes participatory action research as a method. So 
the research is guided by farmers for farmers with farmers. Um, and so we're really trying to transform the ways in which research is conducted. And so if you have any yeah, questions about agroecology or about research, either studying agroecology or if you're a farmer organization and are interested in partnering with university. Um, I've been in a lot of universities and I don't like the university, but I found a home um, in UVM. And so I think they're doing really amazing stuff. And yeah, super happy to be with you all. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody who spoke. So a really important part about PPLT that I didn't include at the beginning was leadership empowerment. And that is going, so we're going to, this work we're about to do is going to help empower us as an organization as leaders and through you. So this is a unique opportunity to do more than sit and be lectured at but actually have control over some of the, the information that you're providing to an organization. And we actually listen and do it. Like people said, hey, I'd really love some seed saving. We're now working to find seed saving opportunities for people across New England. So it's not like, give us some of your like information and we'll try and figure some fun things out. But it's actually, we're gonna do a lot of this work that you help us empower, help empower us to do. And in turn, we're able to help other leaders across the community do this work too. You saw some of them just come up now. It's not about us as an institution or as an organization, but it's about all of us collectively moving forward together in a meaningful way that is informed by the constituency that we serve, which is farmers, land stewards, indigenous people across this, this region. So that's really the focus. My name's Nate Irwin. I should have included that at the beginning. Uh, you see him pronouns. And when you introduce yourselves to people in a second, please tell them your name. Share your pronouns. You feel comfortable doing so. Tell them why you do this work. Why are you here? Why do you care? Why are you in the space that you're in? Briefly. Don't talk about yourself too much. Um, and then what is the biggest challenge that you face in your organization that serves farmers as a farmer, as a rancher, as a land steward? What is your biggest challenge and why? So I have this bell. It's a mindfulness bell. So be mindful in your approaches to people uh, as you speak, use mindful language um, and care. We might not all agree and that's a good thing as long as you're kind and respectful. So I'm going to ring the bell and that's going to serve as a transitionary tool. So get ready to transition a lot. We definitely went over time and that's okay. So what's going to happen is either you're going to stay a little bit later, which you might not want to, because you might want to go and see the movie that Lou's going to show or something else, but we're going to leave this space. We're the last thing in here. So we're just going to keep going for until the last person leaves. <laughs> That's not no pressure though. So <laughs> on that front, uh, what I want you to do first is think of your biggest challenge. What's your number one problem that you're having right now? And you're going to think of that challenge for one minute and try and breathe and try and ground yourself. The first thing that comes to your mind might not be the actual challenge that you're facing. What is your biggest challenge? I'm going to ring the bell. I'm going to give you one minute of silence to think as an individual. Okay. What's keeping you awake at night? What's stressing you out? What's making you sad with your kids? That's not related to your kids. 
was making you tired. Yes, no, no, no. Okay, that's a minute. Yeah. Okay, good job. Now you're going to do, we're going to, I'm going to tell you each transition now. So you know, when the bell rings, you move into the next one. You're going to have to move. I'm sorry. I know we're, you know, some people are like, I just want to sit, I had lunch, but too bad. Uh, two minutes, you're going to stand up and you're going to find, you're going to stand up and you're going to find another person. You stand up, yeah, I'm going to stand up. Find the person that you don't know. Don't, don't move yet though. Find a person that you don't know and tell the above. Name, profession, why you do this work. Pronouns. Hold on, don't talk yet. Pronouns and your channel. If you can't get all those, do name, pronouns, and your biggest channel. It looks like there's only three of you. It's going to be a little confusing, but our as um, meaningful things rather than just so the challenge is is how to know okay. so what's going on is that where we're <laughs> coming down <laughs> uh, i mean how do you get to more transparency if you don't have an audience you know <laughs> Okay, or if there are many audiences. Go back to the main group. So, I'm when you are ready to share, you're on Zoom. Um, I will turn you up and the room should be able to hear you. Yeah, there's another, uh, over there. You, you like me, all colors, all flavors. Oh no, it's in my special little. Um, okay. well, it has a special little place. I have lots of stuff that I need to fill. I need to fill. As much as you can repeat stuff that's far away yeah. to the mic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So please take a seat, and um, we're going to share some of our top the top challenges that our groups decided upon. I'm just going to wait a second, though. I know it's so annoying because I. I do. Yeah. Okay, cool. I know. I yeah, I was an elementary school teacher. <laughs> I was a high school teacher at one point, so it's uh yeah, it's it's in my blood. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Um, Stay near the mic. So what we're gonna do now is um we're gonna identify challenges and I'm gonna turn it over. Do you mind? running this piece sure. just challenges uh so just per group um just raise your hand for your group we're going to record it up here and then we're going to move from that yeah we're going to have english and spanish on the other side we'll start with english um i guess i'll start with my group do you care to share either of you or anyone else in our group uh well we the challenge i think is being um Can you speak up a little bit sorry maybe somebody else should articulate it better so okay. one of the challenges that we identified was climate change mm -hmm. and we came to the conclusion um that one of the ways that we collectively can kind of like work together to uh get a message across is that we need to come up with better terms for branding and how we're going to say things. I think that um, all these big businesses have, have done a great job at Unified. kind of like, you know, unifying a, a marketing strategy that, you know, pushes their own agenda and their own uh, talking points. When you talk about climate change or global warming, these are terms that they came up with um, and that they don't really quite uh, describe what's happening with the earth right now. So I think that if we had 
better organization as far as like marketing and branding, uh, uh, coming up with better terms, and then pushing all these terms at the same time, it would give us a, more of a voice and amplify the message instead of everyone kind of running around doing separate things. Okay. Next group, I'll just kind of go this way, this side, and then this side. Yeah. I can speak for my group. Um, the problem, the challenge that we came up with was overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Like being overwhelmed and kind of the overlapping unifier being capitalism and a cost of money. Um, I'll share my story. I'm a student at New York Sandhurst and I study psychology and I study gender and sexuality studies. So, um, and then from my own wants, I learned about climate change and um, the land. So I come in contact with her. A lot of problems come into my field. Um, so I don't know where to start. Is there so much? That, then that's good. No, that's good. So we'll say like the feel, like the emotional state of being overwhelmed. Okay. We also said funding, I think, too. Would it be helpful, Michelle, if I did this piece or I wrote for you? Um. You, yeah, you do it all right. You sure? Yeah. Um. Okay. Next. Next big problem. Challenge. Just raise your hand, please. Um, so in the city, there is a challenge of retaining interest in farming, and there's a competition of prioritizing housing for empty lots. So I'll say land. So, yeah, like land yeah. access, development, and interest in farming, you said too? Yeah. Okay. That's and housing. And housing. Housing is a displacer? No, I was like, housing versus green state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. yeah. uh, language barrier is another one. So if you can't communicate with the people who need support um, or need information, then you can't do anything else. What else? Mr. Dorr? Yeah, so uh, in Boston and Rockford and Dorchester and Madison, um, people who grew up in those neighborhoods from childhood, 1965 up until the present time, these people are trying to um, get community land, community space, mm. community garden. What's happening is people who are just coming into the city, mm. Caucasian people, um, they're being able, Mayor Michelle Wu, Mayor Wu, and the mayor before Mayor Wu, they're being able to let the people that come in from outside of the people who grew up there and who were trying to get this land for many years. They're letting young get the land instead of the people who grew up here, were raised here, have family here, mm -hmm. have children here, have grandchildren here. They're not able to get the land, but the people who are just coming in, they're able to get it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very unfair and it's an injustice. What else? Well, it's just really like what kind of bubbles is the top of your yeah. Our education is on the out of all these challenges. Supposedly, master of the That's a good one. I mean, not the same, but that's cool. Thank you. Education? Um, I think it's di different than education. How would it's like imposter syndrome? See, like just everybody. Farmers feel that too. I think that there's yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 right. like yeah. different things. Everybody. Stigma? Stigma? No, not stigma. Right. 
imposter syndrome? Yeah, yes. I think imposter yeah. syndrome in some way, like education links to imposter syndrome, links to like empower, like feeling like you are, you can do it. Like, I don't, I, I am not, I'm a land-based person, but I can't throw anything well, <laughs> right? So, and that's fine. I know what I can do and what I can't do, but um, yeah, if you're trying to do something and people are consistently making you feel bad, mm -hmm. intentionally or unintentionally, I think that that's something that I see a lot. Right? People talking down, very technical, mm -hmm. right? You have your fancy words and you mm -hmm. know what you're saying, but like the knowledge that that people like, I'm gonna point you out again, but Rocky have is like generate like deep rooted knowledge that persists way before somebody came up with the term like. Next month, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say cultural differences. Okay. You know, some people value uh, agriculture, some people don't value it. Mm -hmm. like, want to destroy it. So, mm -hmm. kind of like knowledge from the colonization, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. There's yes. also yes. like the. Yes. the, the yes. Yes. Misinformation knowledge that is promoted about you know, using pesticides mm -hmm. and you know, like mm -hmm. that the looks of things matter more than mm -hmm. like yeah. nutritional quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the whole yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen native corn? It's all we're talking about. It's much more beautiful than what you find in human corn. Um, yeah, it's it's what we're taught to think. Yeah. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so I'm just to. Oh, yeah, the people online. Like, sorry, I knew that was going to be a problem at some point. Thank you, Matt. Go ahead. Folks on Zoom can feel free to share any conclusions too. We, we thought that um, trying to network with other people is difficult because of a lack of transparency across the different groups and the different activities that are going on. Um, some people have money and they can't find people who could put it to use. Um, some people are trying to exp um, explain the um, uh, innovations in um, food systems and can't find who's doing that kind of activity. So um, more uh, better communications and more transparency would be helpful. Thank you. I think the whole room heard. Go ahead. Great. Cool. Okay. I think we have a lot of challenges. That's good. Uh, well, no, it's not. I mean, we've identified some challenges. Uh, what we're going to do now, I'm going to, can you move on to the next slide, Matt? Okay, we did that. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now, and I know like many of you, if some of you need to leave, that's cool. In 15 minutes, the session ends. Technically, I'm going to go for till 3.30, but if you like have the desire to be like, God, this is exhausting to me, you may you may um, if you want to. So what we're going to do now is we are going to, we could do it a couple ways, but I think what we're going to do is you're going to get back in your original groups that you just formed. Because you, at this point, hopefully feel comfortable. If you'd rather focus and move into another group, that's fine. But get into a group of somewhere <laughs> between four and six people based on Oh, sorry. I'm just, I'm so used to moving around the Based on one, you choose one of these challenges. You choose one. Only one. Yes. Um, I'm going to, I'm just handing this out to folks if you want to use this. So what we're going to do is you are going to um, move through this process. Remember, this is your work. The goal here is to directly impact and inform us. This was in for informational. There's things up here that we didn't know. But now is you can actually create a process with us to solve in some way one of these challenges. So it's gonna we're gonna move kind of quick, and it's okay if you don't get everything. We're gonna do five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes on each one of these topics. I'm gonna provide you with the material. Can you move to the next slide, Matt? 
you stand over here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm okay. So this is an idea of like what it might look like. Okay. You're you might create something that looks like this, or can you move to the next slide, please? Or you might create something that looks like this. The idea is to be generative, to be creative, to have you can draw, you can have visual notes, uh, which is you know, so images instead of uh uh text is that's great, right? Visuals are better for communication because they go across languages. Uh, we're gonna move through purpose, principles, participants, structure, and practices. <laughs> hold on, Michelle, hold on, hold on. Don't don't hand out the Michelle. Hold on, hold on with those. Sorry. Um all right. Uh okay, can you go to the next slide, please? Sorry. Okay. So I'm gonna you're gonna get in your groups and then you're gonna decide on your purpose. You have about five minutes to do that. After that, you're gonna talk about your principles. Matt, will you go to the next one, please? You're gonna decide on what are the rules that you're you need to agree upon mutually to achieve your purpose. And then just the next one. And then you're gonna need who who do you need to achieve this purpose? Lists of people, right? What, is it farmers? Is it indigenous people? Is it everyone? Um, but be specific with your groups. Uh, move to the next one, please, Matt. What structures do you need to achieve your purpose? Five minutes on this. It could be, do you need a steering committee in the coalition that you currently run? Do you need to develop a charter in that coalition? Do you need to use an online tool like Action Network? Do you need to send out surveys? It could be anything, any kind of structural thing. And then the last one is, it is like a school project. <laughs> Practices, what do you need to do? What are the steps, what are the action items that you need to do to accomplish this purpose? So those are all the things you're gonna work on in about a 20 to 30 minute period. When you're done, you can just leave this for us. You can stay and rotate and look at other people, but everybody should have um, one of these. We might not have enough for everyone. If you get your group and you don't have one, so I've got eight, then the question is, um, you can just talk about it or use the worksheets that we gave you. We got pens, we got markers from elementary school we have grown-up markers called sharpies um <laughs> we have uh sticky notes so we have all the things you need the first one if you met if you would just scroll back up to purpose so get in your groups and find out what is your purpose what what are you going to work on five minutes to do that and then we'll quit go please Right. Sorry, I'll be in front of the board. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. All right, good. So I don't mind. I know you don't mind, but I'll... Um, folks on Zoom, I will be sharing a jam board with you momentarily. Sorry, man. I can't, I can't like I know. I'm I'm very annoyed. Oh, okay. Hello. Oh, Lisa. Yeah, that's right. You can't see who's here. Um, looks Why like Shannon. You? Looks like Shannon has left, and and I'm thinking about leaving too because I don't I don't see how this can work. <laughs> yeah, I I feel you. I love the idea. This is like the social social permaculture, but it feels very hard to do it um, right now with such small. Um, okay, if you're not gonna use the zoom i won't share the gym board we're having a little yeah challenges thanks. with that but um yeah i think you've gotten what you could out of this workshop thank you for participating yeah, thank, you, thank guys. you appreciate it bye everyone bye bye